All right, so after talking about resting membrane potentials, um, I want you to realize that all of the resting membrane potential stuff that we talked about is going on in the background and everything that I do now is adding to that. So the leak channels still exist and the sodium potassium pump is still pumping. So um, now every single cell has a resting membrane potential and it averages minus 70. Some are not quite minus 70, but they're all minus at rest, meaning that the extracellular fluid that you hit first with the electrode was going to be positive, and then the intracellular fluid that you hit second is going to be negative, and how much more negative? 70 more negative, negative 70 millivolts. So every single cell has a resting membrane potential that's similar to that but neurons and muscle cells, which is where we're trying to go here, will change that number really dramatically in order to send signals in the body. So I'm gonna start introducing you to how you can change that number. How could you change the number from minus 70? Well, minus 70, remember, is measuring how different the extracellular fluid, um, the intracellular fluid is from the extracellular fluid. So conceptually, does it make sense to you that that number would somehow change, even if you can't predict how, if you opened or closed ion channels that are in the cell membrane? Not the leak channels, those are still there and they're always there, but if I put in a sodium channel and opened it, wouldn't the number change somehow? Or if I put in a potassium channel and opened it, wouldn't the number change somehow? Now we're gonna get to the somehow in just a second. Or wouldn't the number probably change somehow if I had a massive change in ion concentration on either side of the membrane? Like if I all of a sudden lost all of my extracellular sodium, wouldn't that do something to the number? Yeah, it would, right? And in a minute, you're going to be able to figure out what the something would be. Well, not a minute, but a day or so. Um, so these are the things that theoretically can change that number, the resting membrane potential. But I want to start thinking about them and sort of start naming them. Okay, so um, when you're sitting at resting membrane potential, you are sitting here, right? Resting membrane potential is minus 70, right here, okay? And you're sitting at minus 70, and so if you measured, right, your resting membrane potential is sitting at minus 70. Now, that is polarized. You are polarized at minus 70. If you become depolarized, it means that the inside and the outside of the cell membrane become less different or more similar to one another. And you would move from minus 70, depolarizing would be moving up towards zero. Zero would be no difference between the intracellular fluid and the extracellular fluid. If, however, the um, ICF and the ECF were more different from one another, you would be coming hyperpolarized. And instead of the number moving from minus 70 to zero, which is what um, depolarization would do, it might move from minus 70 to, for instance, minus 90. So depolarization is a reduction in membrane potential. The inside and the outside are becoming more similar to one another. Um, and I want you to think about how we could cause that to occur. So I'm gonna give you two possibilities. I'm gonna start at resting membrane potential and resting membrane potential again was, nope, not that. Resting membrane potential was, let's scribble it out real quick. Oops, didn't mean to draw it yellow, but yellow is fine, it will work. Um, resting membrane potential was minus 70 millivolts. Okay, and so I had a slight positive charge and a negative charge like that. So I'll give you two choices. If I put in not a leak channel, but a gated sodium channel, or, and opened it, a gated potassium channel. Which one of these, if I opened it, would cause the resting membrane potential to go from minus 70 closer to zero? So think through that for a minute. 
Okay, so it's kind of run both scenarios in your head. And again, these are not the leak channels. The leak channels are in there. You know if I draw it, it's going to get even messier. So um, if I put in a gated sodium channel and opened it versus put in a gated potassium channel and open it. If you put in a gated sodium channel and open it, sodium is going to go in down its electrochemical gradient, right? And when it does that, what will happen to the number? I'm going to take positives from the positive outside and I'm going to move them to the negative inside and the inside and the outside of the cell membrane are going to become more similar or more different. So if I take positives from the two positive outside and put them into the two negative inside, then what's going to happen to this number over here? What's going to happen to it? It's going to become less different, right? The inside and the outside are be going to become more similar. So what this would do, opening the gated sodium channels, that would cause um, depolarization. So one of the really easy ways, it's not the only way to cause depolarization, but since I worked so hard on sodium's electrochemical gradient with the sodium potassium pump, um, a way to um, cause depolarization is to open a gated sodium channel and sodium will rush inside the cell. And so what will happen to the number is the number will go from minus 70 um, up towards zero. Okay, if the inside and the outside are identical to one another, then that number measures zero. It can even overshoot zero as you just end up getting a slight amount of more positives on the inside than you otherwise would have had. So that's how you cause depolarization. So if this were my diagram, I would write open sodium channels with depolarization and specifically it's gated sodium channels. Okay. And then um, what about hyperpolarization? So if we ask ourselves the same question, how can you cause the inside and the outside to become more electrically different than they are at rest? How can I get them to do this? And it's really the same question that I asked you before. Can I open a gated sodium channel or a gated potassium channel to cause hyperpolarization? Well, we already know that opening gated sodium channels causes depolarization because sodium, which is a positive ion, goes from the positive outside to the negative inside and the inside and the outside become more similar, depolarized. But what if I opened a gated potassium channel? Which way does potassium move when you open a gated channel? Potassium will move from the 30 concentration inside to the one concentration outside. And so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up taking positives from the um, negative inside and giving them to the positive outside. And I'm going to make them even more different than they were before the inside and the outside of the cell membrane. So this hyperpolarization right here is generally due to opening gated potassium channels. Now there are other ways to do it. There you can move other positive ions out, of course. But why is potassium so dependable? Well, because I work really hard on it with the sodium potassium pump all the time. So um, to reiterate, if I um, start from resting membrane potential and open a gated sodium channel, the number might go from minus 70 to maybe minus 50. However, if I start from resting membrane potential and open a gated potassium channel, the number might go from minus 70 to minus 80. Depends on how much um, sodium or potassium you move. And then what about repolarization? What about this one picture that we've got here, which is repolarization? What about that? Well, um, we will see that with repolarization, what happens is, um, depolarization is often very, very massive. And I open a whole bunch of gated sodium channels and let a whole bunch of sodium in and the number goes all the way to zero or maybe even past zero, but let's just say zero. Um, and then what I'm going to need to do because homeostasis is I need to get it back to the minus 70 really quickly. So how could I, after I just opened a whole bunch of gated sodium channels, 
and depolarized to let's say zero. How could I get back to minus 70 really, really quickly? I could open gated potassium channels. So I had a whole bunch of positives moving in when I did this. And now I'm gonna close the sodium channels and then I'm going to open the potassium channels and a whole bunch of positives are going to move the other direction. Now I'm gonna end up with an issue though because of course all of my ions are in the wrong place. So what I just did to depolarize was massively let a whole bunch of sodium in and then I'm gonna close my sodium channels and then to repolarize I'm going to massively let a whole bunch of potassium out. Okay, but now the sodium and potassium are all in the wrong place for homeostasis. Any idea how I can get them to swap positions? I can pump them really, really hard because I just messed up massive amounts of them. So repolarization um, generally involves potassium channels, but then you're going to have to deal with the fact that everything's in the wrong place. So that's depolarization, hyperpolarization, and repolarization.